This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now in front of the house in Changdao, and today we're going to change some charging stations. So, um, yes, uh, here we have uh, the Tesla wall box, Gen 3, and I've been using it because, you know, when we bought the Tesla, uh, gray market. Well, some people say it's parallel input. I don't know what the heck is difference between parallel input and gray market is. I tried to Google about this. Anyway, uh, what's the target group? They included the wall box. So it costs around 20,000 baht for the wall box, which is, uh, how much is this? Around 10, uh, a uh, little over 10,000, uh, uh, 12,000, uh, no, 1,200 euros roughly. So I'm going to replace it with this one, EC box. You see here? So uh, I chose white. I can I could have chosen another another country uh, color, but uh, it's actually slightly smaller. But the reason why I want to use the easy box is because uh, um, this one you have a web interface. There's some kind of log. Yeah, yeah, so you can log in. It creates a Wi-Fi. Then you log into the web interface. But then you have very basic settings, uh, and it's kind of clumsy. You, you have to go to its own network only when you when you initially power it on, the Wi-Fi will... Okay, they, they switch off the fuser. Wi-Fi will come on te temporarily and then it disappears again. So it's super clumsy uh, because I want to change the settings from time to time. But I understand because Tesla, they, they already have very good app. So there's no need to have a very sophisticated uh, wall box. Uh, you, you can do some load balancing, but that's pretty much it. Um, but when I try other cars, I kind of want to change the number of amps from time to time based on the solar and all that stuff, right? But this one, the easy box, I can show you later maybe. It has lots of features. It can change amps, it can show you how many kilowatt are you charge and all that. So easy box is very nice. It is, I took, I brought it with me from Norway. So uh, I think these guys, they have never seen the easy box, but they, they know how to do the electricity stuff. Actually, this is the EV power energy team from, uh, yeah, they, they were the guys from Chiang Mai, the guys who install uh, the solar panels. So, yeah, this is this is usually what happens when you uh, when you hire elect an electrician in Norway. There's there's one guy that comes over to do the work. When you hire uh, when you hire a ta or you request a task in Thailand, freaking six people comes over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so one guy's doing the job, and then the five other guys, they're looking. No, they're actually helping him, yeah. <laughs> okay, so right now what we're going to do is over here, this cable here has been uh, joined, and this one became really hot. When I charged at only 16 amp, I measured with a FLIR camera 85 degrees Celsius, only here, not for the rest of the cable. And the installation here has been kind of messy. Uh, there was something was not done correctly here in the joint. So it was actually overheating. Uh, uh, a breaker, okay. I will show you. This is the old breaker. You see, they, they, the guys who installed this one, not these guys, they did not do it correctly. They were, when they installed the garage thing. So what the heck happened here? It's, it's a 40 amp breaker. I charged at 32 amp. It was or a good cat. And then with continuous load, it overheated and melted. And yeah, so something was not done right here. I think actually this, this one is not correct. Electricians, they can f easily spot what is wrong. I don't know what's, what's wrong here since I'm not an electrician. So they're going to f change some, some stuff here. If not, they have to change the whole cable. They should change the whole cable anyway because this joint here is not good. I don't know, it's just some electricity tape and yeah. Well, so here we have now a good joint. So this is... So see, there is a clamp here. This is the way, the correct way to do it. And there should not be any heat build up with this kind of, because I think you have a better connection. Man, man, man connect the equal. Yeah. Yeah. Better connection here. And here we see after it's been insulated, there's this part here. So, all right, hopefully this is good. We should test it afterwards and run 32 amp here and see if it heats up or not. Okay, so this is the, the way it should be. So the, the, we use something called, well, I see, at least in, Nor in Norway, we call it cable shoe. See, we have, yeah, it's a shoe. I'm not sure what it's called in uh, English, but this, this one ensures the best connection and where all the wires are in use. And then you see, this is the 
uh, the old shabby connector uh, done by some local uh, dude and uh, you see that not all the not all the wires are in use and then this is, becomes a bottleneck and then the, the few wires that are in use are overloaded that's why it's overheated yeah always use good electricians when you install uh, something critical like this so we're now charging here uh, we now charge a 32 amp and you can see here that uh, the instrument uh, points okay it's pulling 31 yeah 31 uh, a little bit up and down 31 amp and now we check the voltage 216 17 yeah okay so th i think that's roughly uh, how much is that 6.8 kilowatt uh, yeah i think around 6.7 6.8 kilowatt Okay, so 6.7 kilowatt AC, and then actually what goes into the battery is 6.2, wow, so there's, um, seems to be around 500, 600 watt of charging loss. Uh, wh why is that? Well, the onboard charger is now working at a fairly high load, and, uh, and also maybe the car's brain is pulling a little bit of power, but it shouldn't be that much, maybe just 100 watt, it shouldn't even be 100 watt, the BMS and everything, so but I, you, you can't hear any pumps or anything, fans or anything like that. So you can see also the battery is resting at 22 to 31 degrees Celsius. So there's no cooling going on here. So I guess uh, the 500, 600 watt is just uh, uh, heat somewhere. I guess if we poked into the car, I'm not sure where the, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's check it out. The onboard charger should be under the hood. We should actually see the heat in the onboard charger. Yep, as expected, you see one part here is hot, 40, 45 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so that's the, this is where the heat went. Uh, I guess this unit here is the onboard charger. And now let's see. Okay, so there's a little bit of heat here, but this is as expected when you have some load, a 32 amp. We see around 30, 33 degrees, that's, that's no problem. What about on the, on the cable shoe here? The jo okay. 32, yeah, that's fine. This side, this side is where it gets slightly warmer. Yeah, 34 degrees, it's no problem. And what about here on the joint here? Wow, the joint has the same temperature as the rest of the cable. This is the way it should be. Yeah, 29 degrees Celsius, no problem. And we are, by the way, in the shade here, so you will not get that hot really. So, wow, this is, this is the way to do it, the correct way to do it. Uh, the problem was that, I can explain that, the old joint, there was like, it was a connection, right? But it was not good connection. There was, there was some connectors that had a slight gap, and then it was arching. So this tiny, tiny arcing made the heat, build up the heat. So, you see, this is why you want to pay a little bit extra to get, uh, good uh, electricians not some shabby local electricians and okay if there would be a fire here th this wood probably burns very well and then the whole garage might burn and then the car also burns and then it comes in the news and then what who do they blame it's the ev the ev is the problem the ev caused the fire no it was not the ev that caused the fire it was caused by poor installation, bad knowledge, and not too strict regulations in Thailand. Okay, so we've taken out the old uh, Tesla wall box. I will actually donate this to my mom. Yeah, she has a resort nearby. She will uh, make it uh, available for people, for customers. But here we have the EC. So, yeah, we install it. Uh, we only use one phase here. I actually have three phase. So we can, I can show here, we have three phase going into the house. But for the garage, we only use one phase, which uh, I think is good enough, uh, since uh, not every car has a three-phase onboard charger. So with this one, I get 7.4 kilowatt or seven-ish kilowatt. Right, we're now up and running with the EC box. And what I like about the EC box is you have this nice app. You can view everything here. Uh, see how you can look at the session here. Also, how long we've been charging, how many kilowatt hour, all that. Well, uh, maybe it's not counting correctly yet. We just started the session. But yeah, so now we have it here. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.